It's an honor. Um, just, just, just to go ahead and make it, uh, make it official, man. A former UFC fighter, former King of the Cage champion, fighting out of Amarillo, Texas. Um, fighting on a Grudge Training Center, Mr. Paul, the head hunter, Quintello. We're ecstatic to have you, man. Welcome to the show. No problem at all. Um, no problem at all. How, how, what's going on? What's going on? Why, why are you guys doing a radio show right now and they're in the playoffs? Um, <laughs> we thought you might be watching and we wanted to, you know, do you a favor and get you off the couch. No, I, I don't. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good one because I'm actually sitting on the couch watching this game. But yeah, I was. Um, I just, I just can't believe. I just can't believe that the 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 Steelers are just running the ball right down their throat. Hell yeah! We're not going to take up too much of your time. We just wanted to quick ask you some questions here, and then uh, you know because because uh, Brian's going to start this questioning off. Though Brian, you want to you want to you want to hit some questions real quick. Yeah, yeah. We we know you've been fighting since uh ninety seven, man. I'm just, just out of out of nowhere I'm gonna throw it at you. Um where were you born and uh where did you grow up at? You know, I'm pretty much you know, bo- you know, born in born in Tuya, Texas, which is like uh fifty miles south of uh of Amarillo, Texas. I pretty much grew up in Amarillo. All through oh. elementary through high school and stuff. So uh Amarillo is pretty much where I grew up at. Uh, you know, started fighting there in Amarillo. Which back in the day, uh, Steve Nelson, which is the uh, head coach for Palo High School, uh, he was in shoot fights, uh, shoot fu- shooto and uh, pancreation when Japan nice. first started doing their mixed martial arts. So he brought that style to Texas. And back in then, he called it shoot fighting, but it was also a spinoff off of pancreation style because it was Texas was not allowing uh, close fist combat, so it had to be open hand. Mm-hmm. So the pancreation style came involved. You know, he had an open ri- uh, a ring, a ring rope, boxing ring, and you know, simple. I think it was five minute rounds. You know, following the shooto, the shooto or you know shooto uh, program, but in the state of Texas, it had to be an open palm strike. So that was that where it brought the uh, the pancreas to open hand strikes because it's Texas. You know, spin off from there. That was you know first fight was uh, I, I believe it was '96. It almost was '96. I can't remember, but it was uh, James Stone in Emerald, Texas, at the fairgrounds and. But then my second fight, you know, rolled off right into uh, fought Dan Severn when Dan Severn was the uh, champion of champions of the UFC. I wow. fought him in a, in a oh. pancreation style fighting, and then you know had a heavyweight tournament back then. And back then when I was fighting, it was that old style UFC style where you fought three times in one night, the uh, eight man tournament. Nice. And, uh, you know, that's what, you know, I've known. That's why I went to school with with the late Evan Tanner, which he was. Oh, a, really? He was a senior. Yeah, Evan Tanner went to my high school. Oh wow! Uh, he, he was God actually, uh, so. Love that guy, grade, man. Grade, yeah, two grades above me. Um, you know, known him for a long time. Hung out with him, and then we actually met each other in the heavyweight tournament, which he uh, beat me on rear naked choke back in those days. And you know, he just did a simple leg sweep and stuff. So it's a, uh, you know, some, you know, just you know, Heath Herring also went to Amarillo. He went to Amarillo High. He was a, a crossroads of the city. Uh, now wow. he's making moves. But he got his start. He got his start off the same show as well. Uh, shoot fights, which is the uh, USWF back then. Universal, Universal, or Unified, Unified Shoot Fighting Wrestling Federation, or something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that, and actually, that, uh, yeah, actually, I'm, Steve Nelson is opening a website in the uh, in the next few months. I think by April, where you can download the uh, old fights. You can see uh, Heath Herring. You can see Paul. That Jones. would be awesome. Uh, you could see uh, me, you know. You could see Evan Tanner. Uh, who who wow. are some other guys? There's some history oh. behind that. Behind yeah, that. yeah. Holy even, shit. even, even, you know, even, even Don Fry, the Predator, fought in Amarillo, Texas, under his show. Nice. What's even uh, how even how crazy he's fought there? Do you know the looking? website? Uh, I don't know what it's going to call. I think it's going to call the uh, USW of Champions or Old Champions or History or something. But uh, as soon as I do, I'll, I'll post it up. I email you guys and tell you all about it. Oh, awesome! That'd be great, man. Be, I really, really appreciate that because I'd love to post that on the page, man, for sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. As soon as I find out more info, I'll, I'll pass it over. I saw him the other night in uh, Amarillo, and he was telling me it's pretty exciting. He got all his videos uh, downloaded, you know. From VHS because it was so long ago. It was VHS and uh, <laughs> on, put on DVD. So awesome! Oh yeah. Hey, just a quick question, man. I want to throw at you. Um, 
you're growing up. I know you know you said you grew up you know predominantly in uh, Amarillo, Texas. Would you you know I, I kind of want to get behind you know and kind of see how you know let people see who Paul Botello really is. Kind of it's kind of the approach that I'm taking on this. Um, would you say growing up you know before your your fight career and everything, would you say you were the bully or were you the opposite? You know, I was totally opposite. I was always standing outside the lines watching other people fight. But don't get me wrong, though, if you crossed my line, then, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't backing down at all. Um, and it was kind I of funny that. because, you know, yeah, I, was, I never backed down. I never backed down from a fight or, or a threat or anything, but I, I was never a bully. I think I've collected a couple of milk milk money cartons or something like that, but not that many. <laughs> Some lunches. I consider, <laughs> not, not, not consider the bully, though. That's not consider, I think I did it twice. But, you know, it was it was one of those rough days. It was cold outside, and they were selling hot chocolate in the cafeteria, so I had to bump somebody, push them into the wall. Quarter, <laughs> That's hot what you got to do. You know, there's, you know, survival of the fittest, and I only did that once or twice. <laughs> but, you nice. know, what's so funny is that growing up in Amarillo, when Steve Nelson was putting this, uh, this fight organization together, all he called, half of his card was from my high school. It was like, uh, like maybe like eight of nine of us had always fighting on his card. And, you know, I wasn't fighting in that in a, you know, probably bad area or, you know, the hood or the the, the sticks or anything. It's just, I guess our high school was just a little bit rougher. And so most of his, and most of the fight card was off from my high school. It's pretty neat. Excellent. Awesome, man. Awesome. Um, Paul, this is Dan. Um, I just yeah. wanted to ask you about, this is your main feature on your webpage, Um yeah. The Rock Bottom blog. You know, this is, this is stemming from the, the global invasion non-payment. You're saying a back-to-back yeah. pay- non-payment. Um, yeah. You know, you wrote some things in there. You you did the time. You did the work. You did your job well. Your hands were raised at the end. You know, it was a ro- it, it was a very emotional what you wrote here. You know, yeah. you yeah. thought your road, the road back to the top, you know, was on its way with the you know some wins in a row. But still, with paying all the, the bills and everything, you you got to go day basis, you know, a fighter's life. You had that stress gorilla you're talking about, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then finally you get this phone, phone call, which just rocked your world. Can you touch on that a little bit more? Well, you know, you know what it is is just, you know, the thing is, when you're in that position to fight for a check and you go do your job, the whole thing is, you know, when I was flying back from Dominican Republic, you know, the whole situation found out that, you know, we're not getting paid and we're not getting any money. And it's just the whole realization that, man, this is how I pay my bills. This is how I, I, I put food on the table. You know, I did my job, and, and the money's no good. The check's no good. You know, it's really hard. It's really hard to sit back and go, mm-hmm. and I'm flying back. You know, I got 12 hours of flying, so you start sitting reminiscing. Like, by the time I was there on, on Dominican Republic, you know, it, the reality didn't sit in. But once I got on that plane, the reality sit in. I said, man, I'm just trying to get back to the top, try to get back to the UFC, and, and just get my job done, do my job. And then, you know, guys like this just run a show off the integrity of, of a fighters, of all the fighters, because if you show up to the full, you, you know, you could totally tell that it was going to be hard for us to get our money with people not showing up and stuff. But all the fighters stood up, stood strong, and did their job and fought hard. And we walk away without a paycheck. And, you know, it is stress because this is a, this when I wrote that, this is the second time I haven't got paid for a fight. And, you know, I partially got paid on my first fight. But it took a few months to get anything off of them, and they still owe me. They still owe me some. But it's just stressful when, when you when you're using your savings and you're mm-hmm. trying to stay ahead. You're trying to stay ahead, and all of a sudden, bam, the whole bottom's rocked out of, uh, out of you. You know, you, you've already you've already went on the limb and told your creditors, hey, you know, I'm coming back home. I'm fighting on this day. I'm gonna, you know, every every single creditor I have, I tell them my name. They're like, oh, it sounds familiar. You know, Google is probably the the best thing or the worst thing for you when you come to bill collectors. And they, oh, yeah. you know, they agree. They're, they're fine. Like, okay, no problem. You know, we can extend this. We can extend that. Blah blah blah. And it doesn't work out that way. And I come home with the empty hands. You know, it's, it it, cha- it changes the whole, changes everything. And that's the whole point about, you know, it's hitting to a point to where, you know, how how I'm going to move forward. How I'm going to how I'm going to you know grab myself off the bottom. Because the main object was to get a W. You know, get mm-hmm. the W. That's the main thing. Get the win to get back to the UFC or get back to Strike Force. Get you know get a, com- com- a couple of wins under my belt. But when I come back sure. and the wind's in my belt, that does that doesn't give me that doesn't pay the bills. Oh, and it, was, no. it was hard to swallow. It was a real it was a it was a hard thing to swallow to come back and go. How, how do I explain this? Now I don't got that much money to to stay afloat and and then mm-hmm. plus the boot my hand was broken. So 
I couldn't just walk off that plane and find to another fight. You know, so I had I had six weeks to recover my hand. Yeah, for sure. Now, now speaking of that, I want to piggyback off that, Paul. Now we've yeah. been talking about this a fighters union. Okay, a fighters yeah. union that's going to come in. You know, and I'm not saying that everybody gets fight. You know, gets paid the same. We got lower level, you know, fighters. We got higher level fighters, depending on you know your record, whatnot. We also have you know a monthly pay for for somebody that is fighting for that organization. If you're training and shit for that organization, why wouldn't you get a monthly check? You know what I'm saying? To to pay your bills, help you through, and uh, just like in all other sports, what about merchandising, uh, profit sharing? You know, it, this is the, the things thing we're that, looking thing, at. The, yeah, the whole thing about the union, it's got to be a step. The main thing mm. on a union situation, it would have to be, you know, collaborate with some lawyers. I mean, I always think about, and the best thing I can, the best way to work on this is when you're in that situation like what happened to me, I got totally screwed over. Well, what do you do? You look for a lawyer. You look for this. Well, mm. I think on a union for it to start building itself, it has to take baby steps. And the main thing is you get these fighters. Let's say you get uh, ten, you know, 1,000 fighters. Every month they pay in dues, 35 bucks. you know, whatever they can pay, 35 bucks. What that does for them is that they have this card, and something like this doesn't happen. If the union has enough funds, they'll pay so much <coughs> of that of that fight perk they lost out on, but also cover the, the, the uh, litigations of having a lawyer contact that, that organization start fighting for their money. But, if you, you know, if you have this kind of support, and just slowly 30 bucks, 15 whatever it adds up to. Because there's lawyers out there that love this sport that will jump on board, put this money in escrow, you know, wouldn't charge for anything until it really turns mm-hmm. into something, but have protection that's where these fighters will fight. They don't get paid. Or let's say they, don't, they get paid and they get hurt and they, the company don't have no insurance. Well, the union will step up and get, you know, pay for the, pay for the damages, get them the right surgery. Or yeah, I, I think that's the, small, the first small step is protecting them in a small way and mm-hmm. start bringing in the big guys okay, then let's start making a pay scale. But the first thing is protection. And that's the whole thing with the unions. That's how the unions started in the whole workforce was protection from no. labor laws, you know, the rules, how many hours you work. And I think the main thing is make sure our, our fighters get paid and the insurance. For sure. Stuff. And I think that, that's the first step. That <clears throat> if anybody has the time to put it together, I'll definitely back that idea to where the unions for the protection of the fighter is getting paid and getting medical support. Yeah. If they get insured in the fight, something. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, something really small, and then it turns into pay scale and blah blah blah, and, mm-hmm. and you know retirement. But I think that's the first thing is a little a little insurance for themselves, because I would do it. I'd do it hard because I've been there twice now, and I know how bad it hurts. You know, there's yeah. a couple of guys on, on the fight card that if they didn't come home with two thousand dollars. Him and his my baby and his mom, or you know his wife, were getting kicked out of the house. Yeah, and you, that's you know, how it he is. Had to, he had come, yeah, he had to come home with sixteen hundred bucks. Or he's getting kicked out. Well, he lost. No, he won't. No, he yeah, he lost. So only got two. He, he made two thousand, mm-hmm. but he had no check. Mm-hmm. And you that check paying yeah. for all the uh, bills that are building up over the months while he's training mm-hmm. and having to focus on his fight. You know. So. Exactly. You know, well, he he used the same thing as me. I used my savings to cover my training camp. You know, and and you know, Rob Peter to pay Paul, and and I get screwed at the end of it. But the the thing that really sucks is that. A, fight, a union is needed, no, no matter what. It is needed, but it has to be in small increments to where some fighters say, "Oh, you know, I got these guys did me justice. You know, I paid three months of thirty-five bucks, and they just spent ten grand on me because I only got, I didn't get paid for my fight, or I broke my hand." Mm-hmm. So your next <laughs> fight is that promoter, right? So you can get some okay. revenge. Your next fight's with that oh. fucking promoter, right? So you can get your revenge. <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> with, 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 but but the good thing is, so this one thing that I, I want to reach out to you that I'm gonna need help on is. In a few weeks, where we got control of the hard drive. I mean, this show, this show has a, a ton of stories behind it. Ton of, you know, a ton of stories of one story is you know the first fight had no no judges and no timekeeper. Oh, so the first fight, the first two rounds were seven minutes long. Holy shit! Oh, wow. Yeah, and, then, and then nobody knew who they won because there's no judges. Luckily, the guy got him in a submission. Uh, crazy yeah, really? stories, you know. Which hopefully we can do a whole show about how many. You know, I can tell you tons of stories. I'm For like, sure. Uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like Walt Disney. The stories of this place. I mean, I have a hundred by, stories. And by all means, man, run them down. <laughs> yeah. So, so one thing that I want you guys to know that you're gonna, I really need your help on, is that in a few weeks, hopefully in two.